Hello, Elea. Hi, Sophie. You work as a project officer at the Secretariat of the Interreg Baltic Sea Region program on the topic of innovation. In this tutorial, I will ask you a few questions about the program objective on public services. So tell me, why does our program have an objective focusing on responsive public services? Our program wishes to put innovative solutions into practice for public services and to improve the existing traditional mechanisms. But for the benefit of citizens, this means that these innovative solutions should be demand driven. So innovations are aimed at making public services more efficient and they are based on the needs of citizens. Exactly. As citizens, we expect public services to meet our needs, but also to easily adapt to changes and to respond to societal challenges. These challenges are diverse. They can be environmental or related to public health, for example. They sometimes arise very quickly. We also expect public services to be less bureaucratic and more cost efficient. But public authorities need support in meeting all those expectations. And this is where the program can help. The delivery of public services has a great potential for innovation, especially if we think about organizational setups and processes. Can you think of a potential project which could fit here? Yes, an example could be a project piloting a new method to help municipalities to use empty spaces for different purposes. We can think of disadvantaged groups, for example migrants, in need of such spaces for leisure or training activities. Some spaces are not used in the evening, for example schools, public halls, etc. We could develop tools and procedures for local authorities to apply multiple use of these spaces. You said that public authorities need support. What challenges do they face? As the role of the public sector is to make sure citizens are safe and well through a sound use of public money, it is not always easy for public organizations to innovate. They often lack tools to identify citizens' demands and to use these demands to launch concrete actions. The strict rules they need to follow, plus the budgetary cuts, can prevent them from launching innovative projects and changes in their operations may not be their priority. And if an innovative project is in place, it is sometimes difficult to evaluate its success. On top of this, there is also a tendency to point out high costs of potential failures rather than the gains in case of success. An important challenge is the division between urban and rural territories. Regions are not equal when it comes to territorial and demographic developments. Projects will need to consider these inequalities and could come up with solutions to ensure remote access to service in rural areas, for example. If we take the example of using empty spaces for migrants, this potential project could test its methods in both urban and rural areas and adapt its solutions according to the challenges. The issues public services face might be different if it is in a central or a remote area. From what kind of sectors are the public services we target? From various sectors. It can be, for example, healthcare, urban planning or the social services sector but in other areas too. And who can our future projects work with? Projects should involve public authorities as they are the main actors to change the way they work. These public organizations can be from the local or the regional level, for example. Projects can also work with intermediaries like specialized agencies or infrastructure and service providers. For example, if you develop a social innovation project, Besides local public authorities, you can include centers working for these authorities as well as social NGOs. But you can work with other stakeholders as well. Will businesses also benefit from projects under this objective? Yes, projects can work on creating new opportunities for businesses. They could also establish innovation partnerships, which gather businesses, research and public organizations. 
Obviously, projects will need to cooperate across borders as transnational cooperation is the essence of our program. But how can they implement transnational cooperation? They can harmonize systems and standards between the participating countries. An innovative process that works well in one country could become an example to be tested in another participating country. As we said earlier, projects can focus on rural or remote areas and make public services more accessible in those areas. Or projects may search ways to increase green public offers, encouraging the public sector to become a forerunner in applying green solutions. They can also be original and test unconventional approaches, for example, by testing tailor-made services, meaning services made with and for specific groups of people. Would you have any example of projects which already tested tailor-made services? Yes, we have a project that involves municipalities and citizens from all kinds of background, ages and genders in participatory budgeting. The project is achieving this by building municipal capacities, by establishing transnational clusters and municipality citizens' cooperation. We have another project targeting specific vulnerable groups, such as seniors, to deliver better social services by adjusting public spaces to their needs. This project is implementing IT solutions and developing new knowledge on seniors' needs for furniture companies and for public institutions as the owners or managers of public spaces. I read that digitalization plays a central role in the transition towards better societies and economies. Can digitalization be a topic for projects within this objective? Absolutely. Projects could contribute to the application of emerging digital technologies. The need for a digital transformation became even more evident during the pandemic when not all countries were ready to make the big step towards online public services. Digital tools have a huge potential to help deliver better and faster public services. Projects can, for example, contribute to establishing digital public services by developing and testing new data-based health models These data-based models would enable more participatory and personalized approaches. How could this new generation of services be successful if they didn't consider the actual needs of their users? You mentioned participatory approaches. Does it mean that projects may contribute to a better participation of citizens in public life? Yes, projects may try to find approaches to better involve citizens and the staff in charge of service delivery. They could also find ways to empower and motivate citizens, for example, through new technologies, or to trigger interactions between public service providers and citizens. Projects could pilot new solutions that increase citizen engagement in the transformation of public services. They could do this by using games or other cultural approaches to motivate different generations to participate in public life, by creating environments that support citizen self-organization or by institutionalizing a co-design approach through labs. This brings us to the end of our tutorial on responsive public services. Thank you for your explanations, Elia.